Our scriptures today start with Jesus being baptized. The heavens are torn apart. The spirit descends like a dove. And God proclaims the covenant relationship with this baptized one. We read from Mark chapter 1. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. <clears throat> and the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Change your hearts and lives and believe in the good news. This is the word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Thanks, Marcia. So there's a myth that keeps repeating in different cultures around the world called the hero's journey. The hero must leave home or business as usual or their place of enoughness and security to discover something bigger, to know that there's more to the world than wherever they or we might be from. In our own hero's journey, we don't usually leave home very willingly. More often than not, we're taken there by some circumstance, often accident or a death or suffering of some sort. That's called the departure for this hero's journey. In The Wizard of Oz, for example, Dorothy has to leave Kansas and she's taken away by a tornado. The hero of the story has to lose or walk away from their sense of order and enter some kind of disorder often abruptly. And then there's the encounter. After the hero leaves their stable home, they have to experience something bigger, something better, something more real and more demanding of their real energies. In the Gospels, after his baptism, this is Jesus, who goes out into the desert for 40 days. And this is where we join him today. His journey is quite the roller coaster ride as seen through the eyes of Mark, whose narrative is jam packed with action from open to close. In the space of just seven verses, we go from hearing God's voice at Jesus' baptism to the wilderness where Jesus is tempted by Satan to Jesus beginning his earthly ministry. With so much action and so little detail to hang our hat on, perhaps the best path forward is simply to lean into the roller coaster and feel our way through. Jesus, as we heard, has just been baptized, just been Holy Spirit descended upon, just been named Son and Beloved. From there, we might assume he's now uniquely positioned to begin his ministry, but instead the Spirit immediately drives him in the opposite direction, disappearing into the desert with the baptismal waters of the Jordan still drying on his skin. This twist in his path is no celebratory event, no camping and hiking wilderness adventure. This is real wilderness he's going to with wild beasts and Satan and only angels for company. So why, after the peace and awe of baptism, does the Spirit send Jesus there? It's true that the wilderness would offer solitude if he needed that, but at the same time, it's also this mythical place in our story, imprinted by all those who have inhabited that wilderness for a little while or a longer season in life. It breathes with the memories of those who found themselves there by accident or by intent, who fled there for safety or who entered it in search of what they could not find anywhere else. Perhaps as Jesus was driven in that direction, he thought of those who preceded him there, his forebears who entered into those spaces that lay between where they had been and where they were going, between the life they had known and a life they could barely envision. Like Hagar, who was cast into the wilderness with her young son, 
or Jacob on the run from his brother, or Moses and Miriam and Aaron and all the children of Israel wandering after being delivered from bondage, or Elijah fleeing for his life from Queen Jezebel. And I wonder if in his desert sojourn, Jesus ever wished for the wellspring that the angel revealed to Hagar in the wilderness when her son was on the point of death. Did he pray for a vision, a dream like Jacob's to direct and sustain him? Did he start hungering for manna that nourished the, the Israelites when they were on their journey there? Or did Elijah's question, what are you doing here? After traveling for 40 days and nights on the strength of angel-born food also come to Jesus. And as always, these are simply our wonderings, if you will, our attempt to make some meaning of Mark's sparse testimony, to fill in the blanks that simply aren't written there. We don't have any way to know what Jesus thought or precisely what he learns during those 40 days. We do know that when Satan shows up, Jesus is ready. What Mark hints at in just a handful of words, Matthew and Luke describe more fully. Jesus meets the chaos of his tempter with clarity. A river of knowing runs through him. He is drenched with discernment. And when Jesus leaves the wilderness, he takes this clarity and discernment with him as a treasure, if you will, of the desert, a sign of the sustenance that always comes to those who find themselves in similar circumstances. Surely it was a time of affirmation and faith building and strength building too, a time of transition from what he had been and known to the new life he would build with his disciples. What he knows for certain going in and going forth is that he is beloved. And through him we know for ourselves that this is true as well. It is a start, bless you, this belovedness, and it is enough because times of testing come to all of us, yes? Sometimes we can see them coming, and sometimes we can't. Coming up from the waters of baptism with Jesus into that assurance of belovedness prepares us to look at and try on the struggles and losses of Lent and our lives head on. So that when the time comes for us to experience them in real time, we too will have brought treasures forth with us that prepare us to deal with them. And I don't know, but I think perhaps this is why the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness before his ministry even began. Why Jesus had these 40 days apart, to learn to face down the adversary so that he might better be prepared to do so over and over and over again over the next three years. Perhaps those wild beasts he encountered prepared him to navigate challenges from the Pharisees and faltering disciples, from Roman occupation and the struggles of hungry and hurting people, and even death itself. All of which Jesus would confront before he was nailed to a cross. And yes, I imagine the presence of those angels ministering to him during those 40 days also helped him recognize the gifts of God which walked alongside him and carried him through it all. And in this season, we are asked to join Jesus there, to begin with him there, to go into a wilderness place for 40 days, to prepare ourselves for our journeys of discipleship, to wrestle with the hard stuff and to pray and to fast and to then do something new, to come out of the wilderness and follow. And in words accepted, ex excerpted from and inspired by Jan Richardson's blessing that meets you in the wilderness, these things. After the desert stillness and after the wrestling and after the hours and days and weeks of emptying, after the hungering and the thirsting, after the opening up and seeing and knowing, let this blessing be the first sweetness that touches your lips the bread that falls into your arms, the cup that welcoming hands press into yours. Let this blessing be the road that returns you. Let it be the strength to carry the wilderness home. In the context of the hero's journey, remember where we started, to carry the wilderness home is to return to where we began, 
knowing home in a new way, seeing it through new eyes, so much so that we do life in a new way, changed by our experiences. Not a way beyond all that makes up the order and disorder in our lives, but rather a way of integrating what came before and what comes now and what is to come with the tools to integrate all of it embedded in faith. Baptized in the Spirit, named by the Creator, attended by the angels, Jesus comes up out of the desert and into the life prepared for him. He's ready, going in the company of all who knew and know what it means to walk through the wilderness and receive the gifts that God holds for us there. Faith in the good news that the kingdom of God was and is at hand, and that we might rise up into the light that is Christ and commit ourselves to the fullness of that life we know in Christ and be transformed in our own hero's journey. Jesus, we are privileged to watch you on your humble, glorious journey. We are blessed to follow you from baptism through the wilderness and into the midst of the people with whom we share the good news of the kingdom of God. And we are awed that our journey with you will take us through these 40 days to a bloodstained cross and a windblown empty tomb. Give us strength for the journey so that we may laugh and celebrate and praise with delight your resurrection on Easter morning. In your holy and precious